13,700 pounds of fifth wheel toy hauling fun. A one owner Fusion 373 with 11 foot garage coming in on trade here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Not the kind of thing you find in the used market that often. They tend to get picked off pretty quickly as well. This is uh, one owner originally sold right here at Halet RV by a multi time Halet RV customer. They decided they enjoyed this but needed something with a little bit bigger garage and they swapped up to a big old seismic that we had here. So they had a pretty exquisite taste in things. This is a big model. It is pretty heavy up front with the generator in the slide. You are probably looking at dually country here. We always want to make sure we put safety before the sale at Halet RV. And I think you're going to be happy with what you see here. This is a sharp, sharp unit. Did I call this a 373? This is a 371 Fusion. I don't know what I called it. But there, it's a 371 Fusion. <laughs> it's early. Now, apologies if I've got a couple things on the floor here. We've had raindrops coming in and then leaving and coming and leaving several times today. So uh, I'm kind of like darting in between the raindrops to try to get this footage. So, you know, power cord and a little strap for the more ride stable steps hooked down to this 5K interlocking tie down system here. Hopefully you can overlook that and at least be uh, happy in the fact that obviously the power cord comes with the RV, which is something I do feel you should be able to safely assume. This is an 11 foot garage. And so it's made mostly for like folks that have motorcycles. Previous owners had a Harley or two and that's what they use this for. Uh, it could be great for kayaks, e-bikes, dog kennels, uh, or frankly, this could just be an excellent alternative kind of bunkhouse. Not everybody needs a toy hauler for toy hauling. There's a lot of other ways you can use these things. And that's one of the cool things about a Fusion is that I think it's a luxury fifth wheel first and foremost and like a toy hauler almost secondary. There is of course, a full roll down screen wall back here, which is obviously very handy for keeping the sunshine out. Um, the uh, washer dryer prep up front here while we, before we put the benches down, we've got a nice wide open look at this thing. Not to mention the fact that this is a bath and a half model. Very handy, you know, especially, it's, it's always useful, but this is especially handy if we are going to use this RV as something like a uh, alternative bunkhouse because this gives everybody their own little potty space at the uh, end of the night. You might have seen the central vacuum components down there, this RV being a very highly equipped toy hauler. They don't come much more churched up than this. And up top here, a huge uh, like Max Air style vent fan with wall control switch, so you don't have to try to poke around up there with a broom. Backing up a step and getting everything flipped down, opened up, flopped around. Uh, also gives you an idea of all the other functions this thing can uh, uh, service. You've got that kind of power up down queen bed above and you notice these uh, little drop down side benches. These can fold into one giant lower sleeper. The back of that will roll over. Pretty normal in toy haulers. But you see you've also got that optional use kind of center console armrest cup holder job there. Sort of like the back of a pickup. Uh, basically what's neat about this is it gives you the option of seating six people or four and having some extra cup holders. Um, now, you might be wondering, yes, but where's the table? We'll get to that in just a second. But on the way through, I want to take a look at uh, these uh, tie downs right here. You notice how there's like multiple tie down areas per tie down. These are all 5,000 pound rated uh, in terms of pole testing. And what's nice is if you have like two motorcycles, two full dressers or something like that, or you just have lots of different cargo, you don't have to fight for the use of one tie down multiple people can use the same tie down effectively without you know damaging anything now when we uh get over here you see we've got this handy uh you know thing and you're going why is it all lumpy bumpy well these are the tables i was telling you about now you see where we've got uh you know a pair of fold out tables one being a little bit larger than the other so that if you uh want to you know be able to do some dining here or set something on the rear patio back there you have all kinds of different, you know, dining, entertainment, eating options. You don't have to put them on the patio. Frankly, you could walk them right outside this door and park them under one of the three power awnings that this thing has at your leisure. Also something that's very cool is the garage entertainment setup here. This TV is actually on a funky little like flop down swing arm, but it's got like a gas strut assist system. So it's very easy to kind of put up and down as you please. It also can turn to face either side of the benches, which I think is a really, really brilliant touch. 
Most of the time, garage entertainment fixtures tend to be 90 degrees straight on, and this is a lot more comfortable. Like, you could just totally park out in one of the, uh, you know, sofa benches back here and have yourself a good time, but there's also another hidden secret behind that thing. Fusions have this really cool kind of hidden little ladder loft space. There's a pocket of dead space, well, there would have been, uh, below the overhead loft. And they said that's just deep enough when you're not using it, you can store the ladder up there to get to the loft or the top power bed. Or, if you don't need that, you could very easily, quickly retrofit this probably for things like fishing pole holders and whatnot. And it all just kind of folds right up and gets out of the way. It's simple, it's smart, it's effective, and it also gives you a really good look at the fact that there's aluminum structure throughout this entire coach. Crap, I almost forgot there's a lot to cover even in this garage. You see how this is a standalone air conditioner. This has three 15,000 BTU air conditioners. And what's nice is the garage has its own standalone AC. There's no ducting through the ceiling. And the reason I think that's cool is this is more than enough AC for this one room. Secondly, since there's no ducting shared between the living room and this garage area, if you do have some fumes from your uh, bike or ATV or whatever when you're loading, they can't very easily bleed through into the main cabin. So the whole thing won't end up smelling like exhaust, you know? And I'd say this thing looks pretty darn good. I can see she was used, but wasn't beat up. Uh, again, previous owner is someone that we've known here from Halo RV uh, as a customer uh, several, several times. Um, actually had purchased the 4500 truck that they used to pull this. Now, we wouldn't necessarily need something that large, but the only thing that big kind of truck can tow is anything it wants, and that's what the previous owner was searching for. Kind of person who's always taken really good care of their things, uh, someone with a, uh, a local farming background, and it's always been kind of my experience. Farm type folks, they're willing to put in the effort to take care of stuff. And whenever I see a farmer type folk or like a real labor based type person who trades something in, they really seem to know how to appreciate it and take care of it. And that really shows here. I like how that ceiling is actually, that's a, a skylight from outside. It's just a nice way that they dress that up. Although, of course, over here you'll see that big XL vent fan to exhaust out. Whether it's cooking heat or to just get some good airflow, you can really kind of use it either way. Now, over here at the entertainment center, there's a ton of storage. And if we start by opening that up, you can see there's actually like dual pantry towers climbing down either side of it. But above that electric space heating fireplace and entertainment system, you may have noticed how the TV can pivot around for easy viewing from pretty much any viewing direction, which is, I think, one of the other cool things that they do here. Now, uh, up top, you see that there's also a loft up here. Now, I've got the camera strapped to me right now, so it's not exactly the best way for me to try to peek up there, but thankfully, before, I had, uh, you know, unstrapped myself, as it were, and peeked around up in that vicinity. Now, you might notice when you're up there, you see one of the three air conditioners on this RV. This thing, again, has a 15,000 BTU air conditioner in three different locations. Now, the bedroom and living room air that we just saw back there, they are centralized together, so the bedroom and living room ducting goes up here. So you have a 30,000 BTU living room air system and a 15,000 BTU garage air system. Now, what's really cool is Fusion was one of the first ones to use the kind of air conditioners where you can actually run all three of those, compressor included, on 50 amp service, and you can even run two of these AC units on 30 amp service, which I think is pretty wild. Uh, down here, the uh, big three seater, almost like three and a half seater, you got like two end recliners and a middle love seat. The end recliners, as the name implies, recline. They also have heat massage. You see that little swivel stand on the left side there that removes. And uh, if we take a look up here, I've, for camera purposes, I've got these blackout shades pulled, but if you pull all those down, this thing has just absolutely awesome, incredible, uh, you know, coverage on all these blackout shades. Not to mention the, the kind of like peaking skylight above the door and the full window in the entry door, neither of which would be really hard to like block out if you were so inclined. Now, as we pivot around back this way, uh, you'll find that most of these big luxury fifth wheel toy haulers have the 18 cubic foot uh, two-way refrigerator so that if you do want to be parked off grid, you can keep your food cold without constantly running your generator. Although there's really nothing that says you can't. It's just more maintenance and upkeep on the generator you have to consider. So that gives you that huge cold storage capacity while being park friendly, while being off grid friendly. It's, it's really a pretty awesome combination of things. 
solid surface counters here in the kitchen. And we already saw some of the storage around the entertainment center, but if we uh, start up here and crack that open, you can see that there's like plenty of good overhead space above that, what I'm gonna call the appliance or coffee bar. But down here next to the oven, which there's easy reach outlets all over this thing, by the way, you see even a full extension drawer here. But if we pivot our way around a little bit, that's still not all of the storage in this kitchen. We can slide those drawers open. You can see that there's like a big wastebasket space below the sink even. Not to mention the uh, solid surface sink covers fit right in place below that really modern angular kind of uh, high-rise sprayer faucet right there. And uh, dual stainless sinks below that. Now as we whip around the corner, a couple things. You see a door right there. That is actually just the, the kind of just a quick clean looking cover for your converter panel. So that's where your fuse box basically would be. But easy reach outlet, outlet, outlet all over this thing. So your kitchen stuff is always going to be simple. That is your uh, central vacuum hookup point right there. We saw the uh, all the hoses and everything in the back. And um, something I'll probably mention again later in the video is how Fusion and Montana, even though they're different divisions of Keystone, they actually kind of play nice with one another. And you can see that this has a very Montana-inspired bathroom. Something I like here, though, is that if we crack this open, you can see they gave us a huge, deep linen cabinet. And I love that uh, kind of like um, laundry hamper down there on the bottom section. Now, this toilet, you can see, is angle-mounted, so you always have lots of legroom, not to mention you actually have room to stand and get dressed. One-piece seamless molded shower with a tri-panel glass sliding door and a clear door makes the whole room look and feel larger. And that is height-adjustable shower hardware, something my wife and I would really benefit from in our house. We are constantly having these shower head wars. <laughs> um, <laughs> below that, a surprisingly large bathroom counter. And that is a deep stone cast sink. So it's not a small sink. Let me get my hands in here to give you scope and scale. It's a huge sink. It's just a really big countertop, which I think is pretty cool. Up front here, we are going past a sliding privacy door. And this is the Fusion King glide bed It's a 70 by 80 King. And when you retract that clothing like wardrobe slide over there, it will push the bed against the wall. When you reach your destination, a handy little gas strut and maybe a little nudge if need be will scoot it back toward the more centralized position here. Now you can see there's, uh, again, easy reach outlets on both sides of the bed. If uh, I always, like, if I see something, I say something so that you know I'm not just like, oh, this thing's absolutely perfect. And you know, I, I like you to know that, yeah, it, it is used. Something happened on this overhead thing here. It looks like a couple staples pulled on both sides. It wouldn't be that hard to get tacked back up in place. I'm sure our folks could probably do that lickety split, no sweat. But I just want you folks to know that so that you know, again, I am trying to be fair and reasonable, but there's not a whole lot you would call defective with this RV. It was well-maintained, well-kept, you know, well-used, but loved and, and appreciated so that they could use it for a long time. They just suddenly decided, we're going to get, you know, new toys. We want bigger stuff. We want that side patio on that big Fusion for, uh, what was it, 4212 that you guys have. Well, hey, we had it. This is a six and a half foot tall uh, upper deck here, by the way, which means, you know, you have, and you can see there's no step ups around the bed. So it's very easy to get up and walk around in here. But just to give you an idea of storage, if I get in here and crack that sucker open, up in that corner, by the way, you can see the WineGuard Connect system. This actually has the LTE Wi Fi system in it. Not to mention uh, over here, you've got some serious closet and dresser space. I actually found out that one of the two dresser drawers that are in there from the previous owners still had some stuff in it. I'm going to make sure that gets back to them. Thankfully, they're local, so that'll be easy. They'll just grab it on their way back from work. And if we do a, a quick kind of 180 mirror view here, uh, you can actually see the sliding door as well as the bedroom TV that is included with this. So it has, let's see, garage, living room, bedroom TV with uh, allowances for exterior television as well. Quad zone entertainment, baby. And while I'm taking the opportunity to close the slide outs so we can get some, oop, I, I wanna hit the in button, not the out button. Uh, give me a good look at the in command system right here. So it gives you an idea of like holding tank values, which we have to get the tanks flushed on this, but it, you know, it'll give you active readouts on like your fuel station, your battery, you can see your generator hours right there, 240, well, it'll probably click 248. The uh, generator's flirting between uh, two and three dots of fuel. So, I mean, you have always like good active ideas of what's going on here. 
Now anything that you can do on this panel, you can also sync to your phone and do right off your phone. So whether you just want to like flip the lights on and off or something like that, or if you want to be able to turn the generator or the air conditioner on and off, this can do a lot of really, really cool things. And while we are closing those slides, I suppose this is a very good opportunity to show you that it's pretty much a destination use model with the slides closed, unless you're going to do a Dukes of Hazard, yee-haw, and see what them old Halet boys are up to again. You will need to open at least one slide to be able to access the kitchen space, but eh, it's pretty normal on these big multi-slide toy haulers. Sinking down below the floor, getting a look at our uh, pass-through compartment. Fifth wheel toy haulers not typically known for the largest pass-throughs. This is pretty darn good by all standards though. Uh, especially since you have that big garage, you just don't need as much cargo space up here since you have pretty much all the cargo space you ever wanted back there. This is the uh, brain component basically of the in-command control center. You saw the digital component of that inside or you can hook up to it on your phone. Uh, what's also cool is behind that little kind of shield to make sure that shifting cargo doesn't bash into anything, there are uh, a, a couple little switches where if you don't want to mess with the digital screen or let's say something happens and your buddy Greg, you know, has one too many and he accidentally falls and bashes his head into the panel and breaks it, you still have a manual switch in there where if you need to retract the, uh, the slides, the awnings, the power jacks on that six point hydraulic leveling system, you can still do all that right there. Uh, obviously, you can uh, tell we've got the generator up front since you can see it. We've got that humming away currently, giving us full power in the RV. Now, this uh, is a wide body product, naturally, but it's also on a wide body chassis. And that's one of the other differences I want to point out on the Fusions right here. You can kind of tell if you know what you're looking for by the way the uh, six point hydraulic stabilizer jacks poke off the front of that. This is a wide body chassis. That will give you more stability at your campsite, not to mention, I feel, greater structural integrity when you are going down the road. If you look up top, this thing has like a little cow water sticking off the top of it. Funky little black cow waters up there, like a little RV mohawk job, <laughs> a little punk rock camping. Um, that is an LTE Wi-Fi unit. So it's not just like LTE or Wi-Fi ready, it actually has the whole unit built right in, which is pretty cool. Now, Fusions are, in a lot of ways, they're basically the like a toy hauler Montana. Fusion and Montana actually work together on a lot of things interestingly enough. I, that's one of the things I like about their partnership over there at, at Keystone despite being different divisions. And things like how they handle their enclosed docking center, what they do, the heated enclosed protected radiant barrier uh, underbelly, all that stuff is shared between them. You see a couple odds and ends compliments of the previous owner in here. Uh, like that big 50 amp surge protector with some diagnostics on it so that you make sure you've got uh, you know good power at your campsite. And that right there is a larger 10 gallon vessel water heater that gives you, uh, I think it's about 22, 20 to 22 gallons of hot water per hour if you have it on gas and electric fast recharge mode. Jumping behind the slide here, we've got ourselves some good looking tires. I don't see any weather checking. Actually, the whole RV looks great. I mean, let me shift gears real quick here. Take a sweep down the side of this and look at this. I mean, everything is just glossy and shiny and everything looks exactly the way it should. I don't see weathering. I don't see neglect. I only see a uh, good looking rig and excellent care, maintenance and upkeep. You might have noticed that Equiflex shock dampening pin box back here. If I take a, a little bit of a squat with us, you can see that road armor suspension system. Uh, that right there is absolutely awesome. That's the same kind of suspension that you find on the Montanas. That's one of those partnership things I was telling you about. And they provide some excellent, excellent ride and handling. Now this has twin 30 gallon fuel cells, one dedicated strictly to the generator and one to the fueling station back here. There's also a little uh, sewer hose caddy below that fuel station, unrelated to the fuel station. <laughs> kind of a funky segue, but I happened to see it and didn't want to forget to talk about it. So the separate fuel tanks allow you the opportunity where you can have uh, like a high octane fuel for your toys and uh, you know normal fuel for your generator. Now if you don't care about that, one of the cool things you can do with this is fill both fuel cells with the same kind of fuel you'd use on your generator and then you can actually use the fuel dispenser to cross pump over. There is no bleed valve intentionally in case you do happen to use two different fuels. They want to make sure that you don't uh, you know mix them up and cause any issues there. Now since we're doing the full setup on this, I can actually do a really cool job 
and really showcase the zero G ramp door that comes on these fusions. It's one of the things I really like that they adopted. So it's basically got a cable support system and like pulley system that can hold the weight of the ramp. As you see, it, you, you have to actually push it, lift it up, down, you know, bop it, twist it, flick it, turn it, whatever the thing is, you get the idea. Um, it's, uh, it's just a very nice way to be able to handle that ramp door because some of those things are heavy. Like my older brother, he's an ox, but he's got a messed up shoulder and reaching above his head with his arms to push that door close is not very comfortable for him. Well, this is easy. I mean, his, his boys that are like 10 years old could do this no sweat. And since I am kind of dodging raindrops, I wanted to wait till I got back here to crack this open so I had it open for as little time as possible. When this is all set up, this is the Moride uh, kind of quick set ramp patio system and I love this thing. It sets up fast and easy, which I'm thankful for because dodging raindrops, I've had to open this up and close it two or three times and I've gotten it down to where I can do this in about 30 seconds. It's about as simple as it gets. Now a couple things, I've purposely offset this thing i've set it kind of wonky on purpose and it doesn't hurt the door doing this you notice that over here we've got that kind of medieval drawbridge kind of uh, aircraft cable support system but you see nothing under the door well if we go on the other side you can see a flip down leg and no cable support there are flip down legs and cable supports on both sides of the rv you can actually see one dangling there you could probably see the foot hanging down below the other side I did that on purpose so that you could see how you have the choice of using either the cables or the feet or a little bit of both as I've done here. And there's a very cool benefit to doing that. These ramp patio doors, they have a 3,000 pound loading like your, your ATV rating, but they usually have a 1,500 pound patio rating because there's no support under them. You need to support the end of the ramp somehow. Well, when you add that stable support leg right there, you regain the 3,000 pound patio ramp rating on these, which is really cool. And it makes it so sturdy and stable. Like there's, if you didn't put that foot down and you walked around, you'd feel a little bounce to the ramp door. It's no big deal, it's not hurting anything. But when these are down, it feels super stable and secure. Now you can also see how you've got that rear patio uh, awning, power awning behind the slide. There's also another power awning in front of that slide as we saw earlier. Uh, not to mention the fact that there's a power awning off the back of this. So this has three patio awning spaces, which I think is a very cool thing. Now, a couple neat notes on the zero G ramp door. You see that yellow cord kind of hanging down up there. That is a, uh, a manual uh, release from the inside. It requires no power. Think of that like that little safety pole in the trunk of a car so that you can't accidentally get like stuck in there. You know what I mean? But most of the time what you're going to do is there's this little keyhole down here and uh, effectively this whole ramp system operates like a, like a hatchback on a vehicle. You can unlock the latch with that. As long as you have 12 volt, all it takes is a turn of a key and this thing will basically unlock itself, which I think is very cool. Now you can see how there's the uh, removable Moride side stable step with handle over here. So this RV actually has triple entry points and someone is inevitably going to ask, why is the middle set of steps not one of those fancy Moride stable steps that flips into the RV? And the answer is because it flips into the RV into the garage, which would eat into your loading space. So in this specific area, that folding step actually does still make the most sense, especially considering you already have front and rear stable step entries. The middle door, just to hop in and out real quick, uh, you definitely don't want that eating into your loading space. You don't wanna worry about accidentally bumping into that when you're loading or unloading. And there's nothing like getting your side-by-side -side ATV all inside, loaded up and strapped down and then realize you didn't leave enough room for the folding steps to come in. So now it's just an absolute non-issue. Now, if you excuse me, I got to close all this stuff once again before the weather comes in. Now, closing that ramp back up, taking a look under the, I don't know, second or third awning space over here, depending on how you call it. One other thing I wanted to, to show you is right next to these steps, they have this huge, like, campsite tool chest kind of area. And what's nice about that is it gets it out of the dovetail of the RV. It makes everything like more easily, readily accessible. Instead of burying it into the tail of the toy hauler area, like a lot of toy haulers do, it puts it out here where you can get to it anytime. So you don't have to like backstrip your load to access stuff. Let's hop upstairs. 
And if you're a person who does RV CSI like I do, camp scene investigations, then this type of roof, what you see up here, this is exactly what you want to see. None of the uh, shrouds on anything are sun faded. You see the max air vent covers over every single roof vent. You can see how touch up beads have been applied and in some cases a full peel and seal and recovering have been applied. There, the, the RV has enjoyed all of the upkeep and maintenance and preventative maintenance that it should. None of this is reactive. None of this was done after they discovered a leak. It was all done to ensure that it never had a leak. And that is how you're supposed to take care of an RV, right there. Now, if I'm being picky, I could say, whoo, you need to, it needs a quick bath, big deal. If that's the worst thing I can say, that you need to take a hose up here for five minutes, I'd say you're doing pretty darn good, ladies and gentlemen. So if that looks all right to you, because I think it looks all right to me, but you know, form your own opinions, I encourage that. I just want to give you the information where you can do that. Give our team over there at Haylet RV a call, and if you have more questions, we'll get answers for them. And whether you need hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, or everything in between, give us a call, because we do it all at Haylet RV. So take care, stay safe. Have fun and happy Halo Camp and everyone.